Your dollars give me the dildo. Well, please. My wife walk many hours, both ways to carry dildos back to village. If you bring one little dildo well to us, it forever change us. I worked for Naked and Afraid. And they did this. <laughs> I just remembered something. Man, you guys ever make a gravity bong? Of course. Oh, I love. There's nothing better on like a weekend than getting up. This is what I love about being a grown man with a, with the with the office job. Waking up at maybe six or seven a.m. on a Saturday, just in that natural. This is how I wake up on the weekday, and then loading up that gravity bong and taking like a high school amount of shotgun to the head, <laughs> and just like feeling almost lightheaded, and then going back to sleep to like ten thirty. God, that's my favorite weekend thing to do. Really? I don't yeah. even know. The I feel like it's a waste of weed. Dude, do you know what I haven't done since I was like a baby? A knife hit. It's a knife hit. Oh, you guys know knife hits? Are we recording? Yeah. Beautiful. Yo, knife hits. Knife hits. You take a knife, a butter knife, dude. Ruined my mom's kitchen with this shit. You take a knife and you put it on like an electric stove or a straight up stove till it's red hot. Do that with two knives, right? And then you take a little bitty nuggy of weed. You take a little bitty nuggy of weed and you press it between those two knives and it's so hot it evaporates the weed. And so it's like making a little tiny like weed vape, but uh, analog. So it, it is the most like... You, you, so they both get red hot, and it's danger. It's danger. This is you, how, if you're like holed up in a cabin trying to evade the police, this is how you get high. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the amount of ways to get high when you don't have like a pipe is astounding. But you take two knives and you make them bad boy, red lava, evil hot, and then you press a little bitty nuggy of weed in between them. It evaporates into like a big old nasty hot hit, and you suck it up through like a cone or like a you cut the bottom of like a two liter soda. <laughs> After you've knife hit that boy out, damn, that'll get you. Doesn't the heat go all the way up the knife though? Yeah, you have to wear like oven mitts, uh. but it doesn't get red hot the whole way on the knife. Only the tips get red hot. <laughs> so you're wearing oven mitts. Oh, you're you in your get mom's burned. Kitchen. It's oh, dangerous. Oh. oh yeah, if you're looking to make weed like a like a like a dangerous drug, knife hits the easiest way to do it. <laughs> I love how you just said it like we've all done it. <laughs> that, I can't well, believe I you mean, guys haven't done knife hits. I can't believe I never thought of this. I mean, I've free base weed, which is where you just like take it, you have it like the the wax, and then you blow torch it. And then I remember my buddy was like, I dropped my 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 rig for dad, my dad rig. All I have is a, a straw. And I'm like, are you kidding me? We're about to free base weed, <laughs> and then you just. And it's just like, okay, this is a drug now. When I went to like, visit my buddy in Sac or my parents in Sacramento, my buddy worked at a dispensary and gave me like a little thing of dab. Uh, but it's not like I just had like a dab rig in my childhood home. No. So I got like a little crack pipe from the gas station. You have to call it a eucalyptus inhaler. And so I got a little <laughs> I got a little glass dick. I went in there and I said, You can I get a eucalyptus inhaler? And the guy's like, Yeah. And so <laughs> sold me a glass dick and I was doing dabs out of a glass dick and my wife was like, Dude, do not get caught doing that. That looks like you're doing meth or heroin. It does. Yeah, but it's just straight weed. But it's just like the grossest way to like, boy, I'm like, I'm going to get all fucking set up here. Just getting the glass stick all ready to vape in a big old, a big old ping of hash. <sighs> now I can go talk to my parents for 45 minutes. <laughs> now I can go to family meal. Yeah, just sit there like this. <laughs> just Joe Biden out my family the whole time. My hamster died, Uncle JT. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that little senorita had some life in it, you knucklehead. Listen, you noodle brain. <laughs> I took a weed soda. This is America. Last time I had like a family dinner with my whole family, I drank like a big old weed soda, and they thought I was like stoic and just thinking about <laughs> thinking about like my parents' health. They'd be like, "You good, JT?" I'd be like, "Yep." And they'd be like, "Wow, yeah, he's having a hard time dealing with this." I'm like, "Dude, I, I'm imagining a cartoon I saw ten years ago right now, <laughs> playing a Simpsons episode up here right now." <laughs> ten years ago, when I was still in high school. Snoop Dogg used to have a brand of like CBD hemp soda <laughs> or teas and I would they would sell it to high schoolers so I would just get fucked up. Does CBD do anything and if you go drink to his it? class. Oh uh, yeah, I would I would get high as fuck. Really? <laughs> oh yeah, well I mean I drank enough to get high. As fuck. I remember I, I one time smoked a CBD blunt and I the way I could describe oh, it is like if weed didn't get you high. Ah, the worst. Like I smoked it and I was like, "Oh, it's like I smoked weed." 
but I'm not high. I was like, this is a weird. I remember just being like, I feel like I smoke Tylenol. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I used to get Norco. I got uh, like a head injury or whatever, and I got Norcos, and I didn't really know how to smoke them, but I knew you could smoke them. Yeah. So I just straight crushed Norcos and rolled into a blunt and smoke it, and it would work a little bit. But I was straight smoking Tylenol at the same time. <laughs> hey, everybody. This is bad news. Welcome to bad news. <laughs> uh, with with us is uh, my name is Sam Castillo and my esteemed co-host J T Kelly and of course our amazing producer Jimmy Clifford. What's up, Jimmy? What's Jimmy up, Clifford. Jimmy? What's up, Jimmy? Ah, uh, well, yeah. I, I think the, uh, the the one of the lower moments in college was uh, I was dating this girl and she got her tonsils taken out and of course I badgered her to give me her codeine three Tylenol pills. <laughs> it wasn't a polite ask. <laughs> Babe, come on! <laughs> you don't you don't want to mess with that stuff. <laughs> It'll make you all tired, happy, and warm. You don't want yeah, that. You don't want that. <sighs> you want me? <laughs> <laughs> I love you. A terrible, shitty twenty-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> so then I got the pills, and nice. I my roommate was a chemistry major, and so we tried to cold water synthesize the Tylenol out of it so that we just had the powder pure codeine You powder. went Breaking Bad. Yeah. You, you and your college roommate were like, I'm a chemist, we're going Breaking Bad. I gotta Bad. call my roommate Saul. You know? <laughs> Solomon? <laughs> Solomon's coming down to water down these pills for you, buddy. Yeah, bro. It was, um, it was a, it was a, we, we fucked it up. We didn't get, we, we accidentally washed it all out. Did you then, drink the water to make sure you didn't waste anything? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I got so sick. My stomach was in knots. Uh, just totally almost poisoned myself with an extreme amount of Tylenol. Water which is processing a thing. is where you separate the Tylenol from the codeine, right? That's the intent. Yeah. We couldn't do it, but yeah. What's funny is me as a drug addict did it successfully. I don't know anything about chemistry. I followed a Twitter thread how to do it way back when. Wow. Back when Twitter would teach you how to do cool stuff like that. Yeah. I just, I, I did the water processing. So correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. You put it in cold water. Yeah. And then you let it sit there. Yeah. And then you heat the water up or you just drink the water. I went to class and my roommate came back and was like, I fucked it all up. He just, <laughs> yeah. I just, I just melted the pills. And buddy. I just remember being like, the addict brain was like, no, he successfully did it and he's lying to me. So he wants to keep it all for himself. <laughs> he wants all the pills. Man, I remember, I remember being like, no, he's, he's lying. <laughs> <laughs> This is a show about bad news. News that's going to trouble you, keep you up at night, and then we're going to try to make you laugh about it. We'll get there eventually, but we're talking about being bad people right now. Yeah, I'm not I'm not here to be a good person. No. What's great about like comedy and comedians is it's one of the rare times in life where people you know will tell you stories where they're not the good guy or the victim. Like Typically, when you hear a story from someone, they're willing to share it because either they're the victim and you can sympathize, or they're the good guy and they can be a hero. But what rules about comedy is I can just get up on stage and tell the story where I'm like definitely the bad guy in the story, <laughs> but as long as we laugh a little, we're all on the same team. Yeah, you're endearing. I'm yeah. rooting for you. That's something that's like beautiful, but there's not a lot of other context in which you can just like be a bad guy. And people are like, ha, 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 yeah, I'll come to the next one, buddy. Politics. Politics. <laughs> Politics. Shh, shh. <laughs> Headshot from What's Up, Jimmy. <laughs> what's Up, Jimmy? Taking the state senator meeting. That's him making a pipe bomb. I always say I'll give him a real state senator greeting. That's what the joke I make about making pipe bombs. Was that the thing about the Japanese guy who tried to kill the president over there? Oh, Abe, whatever. Yeah, Abe. Abe. Oh, wait, no, 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 I'm thinking of something else. Because there's the one guy that successfully did the I'm going to attack the socialist candidate. And then there's the other guy that's more recently like that made like, the homemade gun. The homemade gun yeah. in Japan. Yeah. I, I, so I don't know anything about this guy's politics. I'm pretty sure he was just like a victim of the Mooney's cult or his mom was a victim of the Mooney's cult. And so he attacked this guy for his relationship to the Mooney's cult. Yeah. And I'm not going to support his actions or also not going to fucking. I don't even know what the Mooney's cult is. Oh, you know anything about the Mooney's? Dude, the CIA invented a religion, and it's like one of the craziest religions of all time. Let's talk about it. Oh my gosh. So the Moonies are the South Korean movement, and it initially started as like a cover movement for the CIA to funnel money to South Korea, right? But it's this sorry, guy. Sorry, so they created a religion to basically be like, hey, this is a tax exempt religion. Yeah, here you go, South Korea. Here's a little CIA made up religion for your fun. This guy and his Makes wife. Makes me wonder if all of the religions were. I, I, I got money. bad news about Mormonism, buddy. No. Dude, yeah, pull up, pull up information about the Moonies. Oh, man. Okay, so their son is actually really famous because recently he had a split with his mother saying that he was the rightful heir of the Moonies religion. He moves out to freaking like the East Coast somewhere, and you might know him because in like 2016, him 
and his church did this event where they blessed ARs and wore crowns. Do you remember that in the news? No. Oh man, man. We'll, I follow we'll pull weirder it up news. In a sec. Yeah, dude, the Moonies rule. So like, the Moonies also like did arranged marriages too. So like, here's the thing: if you're like a lonely weird dude and you love Jesus a little bit, getting a free Korean wife was like, man, maybe Can we the go Moonies to sounds pretty nice. The tab that says criticism. Right there. I got no criticism of the Moonies. Right there. <laughs> yeah, All right, let's see. So Sung Jung Moon, Moon, I think his name was Sung Jun Moon. Is that right? Hak John Han. Ah, I'm not even close. I'm not even close. No, yeah, no. Sung Moon, Sung Ming Moon. Oh, Ming Moon. Was Sung Ming Moon was the founder. I see. Sun Myung Moon. Reverend Moon is what Reverend he's known Moon. as. Yeah. The good, the good Reverend Moon. Okay. But yeah, he was an anti-communist and an advocate for Korean unification. And he had, yeah, he had the right politics. He had the right politics. Is this for the still CIA. is this still existing? The Moonies? Oh yeah. yeah. And there's actually a couple different splits of the Moonies. Of course there are. Yeah, the Moonies are. I don't know too much a about their theology. Moonies, a waxing Moonies. I believe. Okay, so theological disputes with Christianity. I believe, and I could be wrong. This is my riff on my ideas of pretty much what they think. Go I'm ahead. pretty sure they believe that yeah. Reverend Moon is the second coming of Christ. I believe they think that he is the Messiah, or at least some whole. So it's just a, it's another messianic faith. Let's go. What was it? Um, in 1998, the Egyptian newspaper Al Haram criticized the Moon's. I'm sorry, I can't read it in the light because uh, of his possible connection with Netanyahu. <laughs> also criticized as a automatic uh, advocacy for worldwide automatic theocracy. Can you see what is automatic theocracy? Uh, interesting that it gets its own Wikipedia page. Interesting. Oh, okay. So it doesn't have its own un. It, 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 the the page is specifically for the the Unification Church, the Moonies. Okay. Wow. This is something we're gonna have to look back into um, and actually properly report. Uh, I, I, who doesn't love a good money laundering scheme revolving around anti-communist messianic modern religion? Dude, the Moonies absolutely slap. They also used to go door to door a lot. They're related a lot with like human trafficking cases from other smaller weird religions. Like it's it's one of those spicy religions that was stone cold just like made up by intelligence agencies to do bad stuff. And then the interesting part, at least to me, and the reason yeah, yeah, that yeah. I like like learning about the Moonies For sure. is the son of the mother and father that like are the mother and father of the reunification church the son of this dude comes out to america to be a religious leader and the reason the news article i was talking about earlier google google this guy google son of the moonies our ar-15 photo uh -huh. you guys are gonna go oh my god because it was such like it, it was such something that was just designed to be the headline of a news article like it was designed to be like look at this they're all dressed as like warriors and kings they're wearing crowns a made of bullets wow like it, it was very much designed for like 2016 headline news like yeah. this is something that like if someone made up and said dude i guarantee the we're gonna get some cnn out here at 2016 particularly that yeah. summer there was all of these mass shootings there was the pulse mass shooting in yeah. orlando florida mm -hmm. there was the san the first san bernardino mass shooting yeah mm -hmm. um and both weren't both of those supposed to be jihadists as well they turned Wasn't, out that they weren't. But initially, the guy, they, they were both, yeah, initially they were was, being painted as jihadist attacks. Right. They they thought, and there was also the um, the Fort Hood mass shooting. All within, oh, right. within, there was a mass shooting every week for like three weeks in like May or June of 2016. I remember that. That was a crazy time. And the also, AR, that album by Vince Staples came out. Yeah. Great summer album. It was. Summer I'm, 06. Summer 16. Oh, Summer 16. That's right. Wasn't the album called Summer 06? Oh, man. I don't know. Yeah, Google Vince Staples. Google <laughs> <laughs> Vince Staples. Let's pull Vince up on the screen. Um, but that was a time, and I remember I was still in college at the University of Texas. There was this bill passing um, that had passed, and they were going to uh, allow for open carrying on college campuses. <laughs> it was a that. huge deal when I was still in college. Uh, uh, people were so upset that yeah. people were going to be walking around with guns open carrying on the college campus, not college Cops, just parents, janitors, just dudes like me, but nineteen years old, nineteen strapped year old, up. strapped up, a hot iron on his hip, walking around campus trying to take a class from Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, all right, you know. all right, all right, all right. I hope you got your safety on. And the, Do you remember the, how there was that guy that left his fucking loaded gun in the bathroom at UT when they first started being able to carry around? Yeah. That was hilarious. Yeah, I remember that. Oh, that. Did I leave my gun somewhere on campus? Ooh. 
I swear to God, I got an air tag for this yeah. thing. It's just, it's like showing up to class in your underwear, just <laughs> humiliating. I left my loaded toolie on a, on a table in campus, dude. And so the state of Texas said. We hear your concerns mm -hmm. about people open carrying weapons and leaving them on campus errantly. Let's pass a law where people can open carry swords in Texas. <laughs> and, and they passed it. You are legally allowed yeah. to carry a katana around anywhere in the state of Texas. You know, that was the first time I felt emotionally cucked by a woman. How so? Because I was dating a girl when that law passed and uh -huh. I said, I want to start a YouTube channel that's just me carrying a sword everywhere in Texas. Uh -huh. And it'd be like those audit guys, except instead of saying, no, I can't film in here, I go, no, I can legally carry my sword in here. You want, Legal to, ver you want to very toss. Yeah, I thought that'd be hilarious. And the girl I was dating at the time was like, that's not funny or cool. And then she went out and filmed herself carrying. <laughs> and then she, some other guy walking around with a sword. She thought that was hilarious. And then she left me, and, and another guy was carrying a two handed dual wield yeah, sword. We went to a Ren Fair, and she saw those guys battle and was putting that up on her Instagram. I was like, oh, okay, so when those guys toss around some swords, it's cool, sexy, and interesting. <laughs> but when I want to walk into Whole Foods and really test how much my rights are actually active, I'm some sort of sicko. Okay, got it, buddy. Also, it was illegal to hold more than six dildos at the time in Texas, and so the big protest at UT. Come Come and take it was a dildo. Was coming take it a dildo talking about dildos. I did the limp wrist. I look at my guy talking about dildos. We doing the limp wrist about it. I don't know what's wrong with it. I don't even know how you would hold more than six dildos at a time. Yeah, right? for real. Four maybe. Yeah, four. Yeah, how, you can't hold Just more bundle of them. <laughs> I got them wrapped in a little bag of sticks. I actually kind of use an old. African method. I have a bucket on my head <laughs> full of dildos. Hand on his hip, bucket on his head. Here's a little baby and a little bundy on his head on his hip. We 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 walk five miles every day to and from the dildos, uh, and there's no time for me to go to school. And if we liberate and put a well of dildos in his, in his community, your dollars give me the dildo well, please. My wife walk many hours both ways to carry dildos back to village. If you bring one. You it will deal do well to us. It forever change us. I worked for Naked and Afraid. And they did this. <laughs> I just remembered something. I worked for Naked and Afraid, and they did this episode in like middle of nowhere, Paraguay, and they were telling us that like they had bought this guy a boat as like a part of the deal. It was like, oh, you can take us across this island. We'll buy you a little boat. Except the way that when they bought this guy the, a little boat, it changed the economy of his little village life forever. And so they named everything after the staff that was there. And they're like, this is the Obama boat. This is like the Ryan, the camera guy paddle. And they had written all their names on it. I thought that was so funny. They're like gods in Paraguay. They're oh like, yes, God. naked and afraid. <laughs> <laughs> I just yeah, that's the uh, Nat Geo is getting like gifts or <laughs> I'm like all right. This is the naked and afraid I right. they are gods to us. Thank you so much for Thank you to Mr. Nakeds and Afraid. We love the TV producers. <laughs> producers. <laughs> producers. <laughs> uh, um, naked and afraid was a fun job. What did you do in the job? I was a PA. So like I was just like a little helper boy. So you went and got the dildos in the bucket. Yeah, <laughs> I, was, I was the guy bringing the bucket of the dildos. Naked and afraid is real too, because you know how everything on TV seems fake. And they really get that fool out there just naked and afraid. It's an interesting time where the NFL is scripted, but naked and afraid <laughs> yeah. is real. We live in a world where the naked and afraid TV show is realer than the kneeling of Colin Patrick. What's that guy's name? Colin Kaepernick. Yeah, you got it. Is that guy yeah. still playing football? No. Ah, oh, bummer. I loved him. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> was he a good football player? No. No? Uh, I mean, he was fine at the beginning, but by the time Good in college, happened... his rookie year was phenomenal, mm -hmm. um, and then he kind of fell off. He just, you know. He just took a knee, you know. My dad was but the he... type of guy that would ban <laughs> that would boycott Carl's Jr. all the time, every time they'd have a sexy commercial. Oh, oh. The, Which is the, every commercial. Every yeah. commercial. But when Colin Kaepernick was doing his thing, I asked him, I was like, Dad, what do you think about Colin Kaepernick? And he was Man, you're not going to trick me into getting mad about something like that. Damn. What a fantastic opinion, Dad. What a fantastic opinion. Hell yeah, yeah. Pops. Yeah. Joe Kelly never read a book in his life. <laughs> <laughs> you may keep me from my favorite thing, which is a patty melt. <laughs> <laughs> You 
<laughs> you're gonna try. You're gonna try to get me. They're tr- JT. They're trying to get me to eat a patty melt on Texas toast out of her pussy. <laughs> out of her pussy. I eat that off my wife's naked body. Okay. I don't know why. Like a good sushi meal. Like a man. Like a Christian man does. I imagine your father also doing the limp wrist. <laughs> <laughs> JT, <laughs> they're trying to eat. They're trying. They're trying to get me to eat uh, uh, a Crunchwrap Supreme out of her pussy. <laughs> I don't want that taco. <laughs> what rules is my dad got diabetes like really bad, right? Yeah. And it, like melted his brain. It's what gave him dementia. His untreated diabetes. Mm. But back before he had dementia, he the had syphilis medication. Syphilis of sugar. Yeah, <laughs> the syphilis of sugar. Before he had dementia, he could have just taken medicine for his diabetes or eaten healthy, and he refused to. So we're watching him getting fatter and dying and just get more and more unhealthy and I asked him dad mom's making you a good salad healthy lunch every day to take to work and you're getting jack in the box you're gonna die from this and he goes I've worked every day my entire <laughs> life to be able to eat jack in the box whenever I want and I thought that was so funny I just imagined a come and take it flag except instead of a cannon it's just like Dildos. Jack in the box tacos. <laughs> Dildos, yeah. Dude, I love that. Isn't that rule? There was a guy, my grandfather's best friend was a taxi driver named Ray Bon Jovi. And he got That's diabetes. So whoa, East whoa, Coast. whoa. Yes, yeah. So East Coast. He got, <laughs> Unbelievably New Jersey of you, dude. He got diagnosed with cancer and he's like, So what are we gonna fucking do, Doc? And the doctor's like, Well, we're gonna do uh, chemotherapy. And he goes, What the fuck is that? And so he brought him down to the chemotherapy ward and showed him and he goes, no, no, no. I'm not doing that shit. This isn't medicine. This is Auschwitz. And then he hopped in his red Corvette, <laughs> drove straight down to Florida doing 150 miles an hour the whole time, got pulled over. Cop walks up to him and goes, do you know how fast you were going? He goes, yeah, dumbass. I have a speedometer on my car now. <laughs> Give me the ticket or fuck off. And he did that and like all the way down to Florida, got nine tickets. Oh, my. So what did he do when he get there? Get healed at a water, water well or something? <laughs> Dude, no, he didn't get healed. He died of cancer. <laughs> 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 dude, go, dude, die how you live, saying yeah. fuck you to cops. I like the idea of him being like, the cops like, do you know? It was like, so where are you headed? I'm halfway there. <laughs> <laughs> and I ain't living on a prayer, buddy. I'll tell you that much right now. <laughs> well, dude, I'll tell you, this dude, Ray Von Jovi, was the funniest fucking dude. There was one time when uh, there was a bunch of taxi drivers. He owned taxi cabs with my grandfather. He sold medallions, huh? Medallions, exactly. Yeah. And so a bunch of uh, taxi drivers were trying to unionize. Right. And my grandfather's freaking out. He goes, oh my God, this is going to tank us. Blah, blah. And Ray, who is, you know, a little, uh, a little crooked, he just goes, no, listen, listen, we're fine. We're fine. And he goes, what do you mean we're fine? They're about to start a union. What Ray had done was he had hired a guy to infiltrate the union, become the treasurer, and then take off with all of their money. Oh my Incredible. god. <laughs> he just left fucking mm-hmm. town and he's like, hey, we're fucking good, baby. He's just scam la- <laughs> scamming labor out of organizing the most mafia thing ever. Dude. Oh yeah. And yeah. it's such mob related activity. <laughs> Yeah. Man, Ray bon yeah. Jovi, what can a we guy. get Bon Jovi on the pod? <laughs> He's dead. God <laughs> damn it, dude! We got to get a Ouija board. We got to go visit his his grave as an homage. <laughs> yeah, we're doing, that's our hodge. <laughs> <laughs> our hodge is to see Ray Bon Jovi's grave. <laughs> oh, man, I well, I'll, okay. Well, I'll send you these afterwards, and we'll put them in post. I have these pictures, and we'll I guess we'll we'll have to laser out or like blur out the names, but we'll show the art on the tombstones, um, like. I'm half I'm half Mexican, so we'll we do the Dia de los Muertos, and so we'll go to the graveyard where like all the Castillos are buried in the hill country, and we'll we'll do that. We'll do a proper like flowers. You dig up their bodies? Yes. And do you really? No. Oh, isn't that a part of Dia de los Muertos? Like the old no. school one, you dig up their bodies. We well, just leave their favorite foods oh. and li- wow. items. Like I'm if- racist as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what you you fuck their bodies, right? That's what you guys do. Now you leave flowers and like. <laughs> so sorry, Sam. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought you were digging up your dead relatives. I'm so, so sorry. No. <laughs> Not necrophiliacs <laughs> or Mexican. Fine line these days, buddy. Oh, man. It's the macrophiliacs. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the animaniacs. So um, I, we, I remember we were going and paying respects to all of the Castillos. And there is just this. There's a real popular term that is racist. And now in 2024, that is a term of endearment in Latino American community, which is calling someone a Chino. Is that racist? I it's, thought Chino just meant like a Chinese person. Right. But now, well, the idea is that like a lot of Mexicans have epicantic folds. They have Chinese eyes. And you call him a Chino. You call him a Chino. Yeah. And it's like, 
But it, they're not Chinese, and now people are saying that's racist to do so. Whoa. I mean, there's a lot of Latinos who think using the actual language itself is 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 is, is not inclusionary uh -huh. because you're using the word Latino instead of Latinx. Like, you're supposed to be using Latinx because it's not gendered. I mean, there's a whole re-identification of, like, what is even appropriate in the language itself. Yeah. But like, Chino is now, like, a slur. It is now. Like, you can't... Against Chinese people? Yeah. Or against Chinese-looking Mexican people? I guess all of them. That's funny that we've made up a slur for a specific type of Mexican. <laughs> and it's just calling them a different race. Well, <laughs> it's well, just calling a Mexican it's, dude Chinese as a slur now. It's so funny. It's what it is. It's like, oh, look at his eyes, Chino way, you know? It's like he's a real Chinese looking guy. I feel like guy. every group of Mexicans has a guy they call Chino, too. Like every, Absolutely. Every friend group of Mexicans I've ever known, especially Off like job site Mexicans where you meet him in like a gaggle of them, there's a Chino amongst them. A gaggle I mean, of them? Is that what they are? Yeah, when there's like a, or what do you want to call them, a murder? <laughs> what do you call a group? Group of Mexicans. Definitely not a school. <laughs> <laughs> so a supermarket. <laughs> I got a real SWAT meet of Mexicans over there. We got buddy. a women's gym, Kurds gym <laughs> over there. <laughs> um, we got a Zumba class. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll send a picture. So hopefully we can put it up on the green screen for a second. We'll blur out the actual dude's name. He's not a Castillo, but he was next to a Castillo's tombstone. That's how I noticed this guy's tombstone, and it has his name. And then in parentheses, Chino, and then his last name. And then art on the tombstone, they have a laser etched Bud Light. The Bud Light used to make aluminum bottles. Mm -hmm. So it's not a glass bottle or a can. And they have that laser on. And on the other side, they have engraved in, he was, I guess this man was an 18 wheeler. So they have an 18 wheeler semi truck. And on the side of like the actual back cargo, it says in quotations, China man. That rules. <laughs> so it was. <laughs> Uh, and, and that's yeah. That's so awesome. when the Chinese come over and take this land from us, they'll go, huh? This is a sign of heritage. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is you're describing his tombstone. I would rock that on a t-shirt. <laughs> like if you threw that tombstone on a hoodie, I would be like asking my wife that for my birthday. That looks awesome. That's babe. <laughs> that's still not as bad as like. Have you ever seen? There's this happens a lot with Puerto Ricans where they'll just like taxidermy the dead guy and put him up yes at the funeral yes like, there'll be like a poker table and he just has a hand yeah <laughs> and he'll be in his best like panama fedora hat and then What's he's got it? like That's sunglasses Asian activity too. he's like they got him like tipping and leaning in a chair <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude oh man he's not even upright they're like Nah, he always kind of sat like this. <laughs> <laughs> he was always cruising on one. He's like grabbing a waitress's ass. <laughs> <laughs> he always, he always, he always was sitting like he was on Dirty Sprite. You know? <laughs> 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 he had some Jolly Ranchers in his cup. <laughs> Dude, give me uh, some t-shirts, a four wheel, eighteen wheeler, China man on it. Oh man, San Juanito. Oh, Our first merch line. <laughs> At my funeral, I want that. I want to be with my little Panama hat with a sweater that. It says Chinaman on it. On Not even table. open casket. No casket. <laughs> no <laughs> casket. I want everyone at the table to be my friends, too, pretending like they're still playing cards with What me. I'm excited for you, mm -hmm. and this will be part of your proper memorial service, mm -hmm. but it'll be part of your legacy as a living man. You're married. Mm -hmm. You need to get a married man chair. You it's need a to get a married lazy boy. Or someone. Oh, what's funny is I call those Playboy thrones. <laughs> yeah. Same concept. Yeah, same. Con this is when you're in love, it becomes a married chair. That's correct. Yeah, will you make me? Will you make me the honors of making this Playboy <laughs> Playboy show? I want you to turn my bachelor stink into a husband rank. <laughs> Man. It is weird when I ask, like, my wife's like, what do you want for your birthday? And I'm like, oh, I found this website that sells real Afghan war rugs. And she's like, what's that? And I was like, oh, so in Afghanistan, they make these rugs, and they'll have helicopters or even, like, photos of 9-11 on it. And it's just essentially they're trying to memorialize, like, the Afghanistan war. And she was like, something else. <laughs> I was like, yeah, no, good point. I'm so sorry. I know. We live together. I can't keep filling our house with... Here's the thing. I was thinking, like, a panini press. <laughs> I've been buying the... That the bombed. The Desert Storm, um, the Desert Storm playing cards I was showing you guys. My wife's unimpressed by that, but I can't stop buying them. And I keep coming into her office every time they come in the mail and being like, "Babe, I got a Colin Powell," and she's like, "Stop! I work. I'm working from home. Stop with this. I love it. I think they're so cool." 
Yeah, do you have any on you right now? <laughs> I got some on me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you think I don't fuck? Walk and we'll around? do a proper unboxing whenever you get Yo, more. You always got that thing. You think on I you? don't fucking got that spread on me, dude? I got, I got a lot of them. So this is just two packs. This is two of the Desert Storm card packs. I busted them open. I went through them. I got a lot of like B characters. I got a lot of side stories. There's also stuff that's just straight like military asset, right? And this is actually uh, in M113. Whoa, the, why does this one say carrier? Charles Manson, military asset? <laughs> <laughs> and this one. What would you notice? This was one's a Libya Sam one? Bankman Freed? <laughs> so there's the a card fuck? for Libya, and Sam noticed the back of it today. I'm just going to read the back word for word. Right, right. Hold on. So it's a card. It's a trading card for the country <laughs> of Libya. During the Desert Storm operations. This was released in 1991. All right. I'll let you. Go and ahead. and as a part of the State Department's the, as part of the State Department's description of Libya, <laughs> Libya has only one percent arable land, but is blessed with oil. <laughs> opening <laughs> sentence. <laughs> opening sentence. So Libya's got some oil. <laughs> you've got your son who's never not had a jarhead haircut. No. <laughs> you've raised him to be a golden retriever. <laughs> not I mean a German shepherd. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, he's barking half the time. <laughs> <laughs> he, the only English he knows is the is, is, is the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> <laughs> he says it in a growl. Our Father, our name, be our name. <laughs> this man, he's he's in a dog cage ninety percent of the time. Oh, just this is rattling. <laughs> This is my son, Hunter <laughs> Anthony Scalia. <laughs> his, middle name, his middle name is Chief Justice Anthony Scalia. <laughs> and his only trading cards are, are, uh, are Libya. And, his, and, he, and I want him to know that they're blessed with oil. They don't have oil. They're blessed, blessed with it. God gives his most favorite soldiers and his most honorable students access to oil we taught our son that all of it that that his aunt that has had cancer twice is his toughest warrior <laughs> <laughs> that's why she was given these difficult challenges <laughs> however libya is blessed with oil <laughs> i remember one time i was dating this girl and her dad was a pastor and he I said something about like yeah god doesn't love us and he was like how can you say that and i was like i don't know like children die of cancer and he goes no. he goes you know i knew a i knew a man whose son died of cancer when he was 11 years old and that strengthened that man and the compassion that he has his entire life. I'm like, yeah, good thing God killed a 10 year old for that lesson. Yeah. Like, I was like, that's what you got out of that? Not that God can't teach a lesson without killing a 10 year old? That's seriously, that's, that's insane to me. This man wasn't gonna develop to de have empathy yeah. without. <laughs> you had to kill that 10 year old in order to teach this man the lesson that we all learned the first time we did mushrooms. We learned that uh, Moses almost, not Moses, uh, yeah, Abraham. Was, Abraham almost murdered his son, and Isaac. angel Isaac. Uh, angel was like, "Actually, pause. Don't do that. Pause. <laughs> Yo, pause. You gonna stick it to your son? Pause. <laughs> <laughs> he finna cut his cake with a knife. <laughs> That's like one of my favorite ACDC lyrics. I remember like hanging out with my uncle and driving to go get tacos, and he's like playing uh, just like ACDC, and just like one of the songs is about. Let me cut your cake with my knife. And I'm That's like, cool. oh, cool. I love cake. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do. <laughs> oh, boy. Another trading card is just Austria. I love these things. I can't. So I'm, the reason I'm buying these is because I want uh, an Osama Bin Laden. I'm buying these until I either get a Saddam Hussein or Osama Bin Laden or both. They're only three bucks a pack. Um, and they come in packs of 10. Statistically, I only have to buy like 100 or so packs. <laughs> and I will only, only, only triple digits Yeah I will gladly spend Hundreds of dollars on these Until I get A 90's Osama Back when he was hot what? Not that old ass Cave dweller That we know from the news But that hot 90's Osama That taut That, that tight ass Little body Little the, jihadist Little muhaddin ass The body. one that confuses you Like young Marilyn Manson yeah. <laughs> Why don't you just buy The Saddam Hussein one It's just more fun To open up the packets I yeah. feel like I feel like I'm He's a, a part of something He's a completionist Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I kind of lost motivation to telemarket hard, and I was like, I just don't, I don't really care to make money. Like, I just, ugh, I'm fine. And then I realized I could be spending money on these. I, baby, I closed down two sales yesterday. I can't stop. I'm hitting the phones with like a demonic passion. I'm telling these attorneys, if you hang up now, you'll, you'll never get the price that we're talking about on the phone right now. Don't you hang up, because I need my Saddam Hussein card. And he's selling SEO software yeah. to like help lawyers 
find people who yeah. need help. I go, you're telling me if I walked into your office and I had five good dog bite cases, you wouldn't pay me $2,000 a month? Okay, that's what I thought. Let's get those dog bite cases organically from Google. Okay, let's yeah. just, oh, 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 DUI cases are going to show, whoops, into your lap. What's great about selling to lawyers is lawyers have very specific laws about how they market. So you can't pay me for a referral unless I'm a lawyer. Like if I find out you had a dog bite case and I knew a personal injury attorney, I couldn't make any money referring your case over to him unless I'm an attorney and you came to me first and then I refer it over to him and then I can make a little money. And so like when attorneys ask, hey, can you guarantee me cases? I go, that's not legal. I can't legally guarantee you any cases. But if you want to get the best shot of it, it's organic traffic through SEO, baby. It's going to be about $2,000 a month. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be about two grand a month. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I, uh, J, JT, I, 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 honestly, I like where your head's at. I like where this call is going. I see potential in the software. Mm -hmm. But I got to know, what motivates you to sell and cold call the way that you do every day? It's not because I want photos of a hot Osama bin Laden and the Muhaddin. Oh, it's, it's not a trading card based on a, a war. No. Oh, and you're not. <laughs> I'm not obsessed with a, with a niche history of the Cold War and the propaganda that went along with it. I have a passion <laughs> for attorneys <laughs> and personal injury. With the playification of a violent conflict. <laughs> I love when personal injury attorneys are able to pay their rent and increase their profit. As That's it, what drives me. As an attorney, that doesn't even motivate me. <laughs> <laughs> they go, I want photos of Osama. I go, I'm trying to get this a dog card too. Oh my god, oh my god, yeah. oh my god. Oh, Did what's that? Did I get a photo of the only Bathist currently in state power? <laughs> yeah, I did, buddy. That's why I hit the phones. That's why I'm over 100 dials. That's why KPIs are beneath me and goals are behind me for this right there, baby. You think you just you think you just get the card, the holographic for the body double? No. You think that just happens? Yeah. <laughs> dude, I'd love to get a holographic body double on Saddam, dude. <laughs> the rarest of these dude. Oh, dude, I got the holographic military <laughs> warfare using chemicals. Wow, dude. I remember I, Sorry, go ahead. No, that's it. I remember one of the trips that we took as a family. Uh we went to Disneyland as a kid and I, and I was like, I don't even know what age, 8 nine something and we get back to the hotel after like riding rides and in the lobby people are celebrating in this Hyatt they're going buck wild people are cheering they're pouring drinks the bar is going nuts people are crying they're blasting music from the sports bar and I, I was like what's happening and then this guy screams we got him we got them and then my mom was like what's going on and then on the screen it says uh, sons of Saddam Hussein Uday and Usay was, was their uh -huh. name were uh, both assassinated and both my parents were like celebrate <laughs> good times come on my kid just met Mickey we just killed his sons <laughs> I can't believe we're already at Disneyland <laughs> Sweet this is Caroline. the most magical place on earth <laughs> You're getting a churro. You're getting a churro. You're getting a churro. This country's finally free. You're getting to go back 50 feet around the teapots. <laughs> Sentence lightened. Dude, I remember my brother was going to Biola, <laughs> Bible Institute of Los Angeles. And he was wait, 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 wait. What dorms. was it called again? Biola, Bible <laughs> Institute of Los Angeles. <laughs> and at the time, his RA, when, when Osama, this is like a thing I'll never forget because I was like 12 or 13. I thought it was the funniest thing in the world. My brother said the RA of his uh, Christian dorm told all the guys there, hey, if you're, if you're celebrating Osama bin Laden's death, you need to really examine your relationship with the Lord and see how spiritual you really are. Mm. And I was like, that is hilarious. Mm. That guy probably felt so smart. Mm -hmm. Like, I bet he went back into his dorm and was like, dude, I just dunked on them. I gave them nuance for the first time in their life. Like, dude, I, felt, I bet he felt so incredible telling the group of Christians, oh, you're celebrating death? How Christ-like. <laughs> Boom, dude. <laughs> Mic drop, dude. So good. Sometimes in life you get to make a three-pointer no look. Mm -hmm. That's one where you... <laughs> That's one where you look back. Yeah. You look, Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> look back at it like two yeah. chains, you know? Yeah, I was looking back at it. <gasps> oh. Oh. <laughs> That's me looking back at it. I make the shot. <gasps> <laughs> Man, what do we got today? We have got some bad news. Uh, oh, the first yeah. thing I want to look at is really what's happening to the future of cities. I have a useless college degree. It is in city planning. Uh, 
I don't want to run the jokes in my act, so we're not going to do that. Come see me live sometime. You'll be just as equally You'll amused. know exactly what makes a city planner laugh. <laughs> and it's um, it's this. It's real. Uh, so we, I try to look at all the different news sources, and the site that I'm we're citing tonight is Jacobin. It's a far leftist, but not left as communist. It's like a socialist. Uh, right. It's funny because you called Jacobin a leftist thing, and I'm like, oh, this is that's just like uh, the epitome of liberalism. Right. To you, it's a liberal uh, uh, site. I would say I'm further left than Jacobin, right? So it's named after the Jacobins. Oh, Jacobin. So during the French Revolution, quick history lesson. Uh, this will eat up the clock. Is <laughs> no, I actually don't remember what the Jacobins are. I only know it's a French thing. Thank so you. when the French... Uh, aristocracy was going to die. They had to be killed by a unified French proletariat. The Jacobins were the mercantile artist, like artisanal class. Mm -hmm. They weren't bankers or lawyers or doctors, like skilled craft. Um, but they were higher above than like uh, like an apprentice of like uh, or, or or even like a field worker. They were above serfs. They weren't farm workers. They had some skill. They sold cloth. They made barrels like a cooper, mm -hmm. or maybe they were like a whitesmith, blacksmith, and they made weaponry. That was a Jacobin. A modern equivalent would be a guy that works at an auto shop. A modern equivalent would be uh, like a contractor that has a truck that says never forget. Nice. <laughs> okay. Yeah, like a, yeah, like a, like a, you know. E and E concrete a dry really waller, big on the back. A drywaller that, uh, that underpays his, his, <laughs> his Home Depot employees yeah. for the day. You're That's a Jacobin. <laughs> So the Jacobin, which is interesting that you, that the leftist site decided to side with like an entrepreneurial aspirational class. But the article today is, uh, if you scroll up, there's called, or sorry, we can say right here. It's called the rich want their own cities. You mind if we switch seats? Just It'd so be can... my pleasure to switch seats. Are and, you ready? And you guys get to look at us get up. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah. I don't know if I've mentioned my back hurts. Did I tell you guys what's the the kneecap of the butthole called again? The uh, kneecap that's right above the butthole. Coxic. Am I coxic? Co it hurts. Coxic. Yeah. This coxic masculinity. <laughs> I have no coxic masculinity. It's all this. Man, the rich want their own cities. They have them. So they already do. Uh, one of the things that we're finding with like the fleeing of like wealth in the coasts is like they're fleeing inland. Like you're seeing city, you've seen cities like Denver, Dallas, Miami, uh, and, and Austin, Texas, where we're at now, just like surge in population in the post pandemic world because people were looking and saying, why am I paying an income tax, a state income tax, a federal income tax? Why am I paying all these extra taxes? Um, uh, let's go to a place where I will not be bothered and I can, I uh, live in a right to work state where I can fire and hire employees that are not allowed to unionize. And that was like where a lot of these cities have started to grow. Um, they're, they're also given like cash incentives to move their companies there. Yeah. But sometimes that's not enough. Sometimes the wealthy want to live in a full enclave, like a, like an Elysium type thing. The, the, the story that like has been beaten to death, I'm sure like if you really are enjoy a fan of this podcast, you've probably heard of. Uh, like the Solano County town that's being built, basically like outside of San Francisco, a bunch of tech utopian libertarians decided to like start buying up land and build their own new governable city where they would commute in twice a week into the Bay Area to like keep an eye on their coders and then go back. It's just cutting out the middleman. They used to have to like buy out city councils and buy out, you know, various chairmen of various different committees. Now they go, oh, let's just do our own. Let's just go right cut to the source. If you look back at like the late 1700s to mid 1800s during the industrial revolution in this country, there were factory towns, company towns, where you would work like at a textile mill and then you would only be paid in textile mill dollars yeah. and you would live on the textile mill cabins that you would pay. You were a subsistent worker. The you company were, store. Huh. It, you, you listen to any type of like folk music, you hear it a lot. And it's like, wow, it seems like these coal miners really had it bad. <laughs> What's nice now is the rich are like, I want a factory city, but I don't want them to live. I don't want to live to live in the factory city. Uh, and now they're fleeing the country. They're not only fleeing the American coastal states that heavily tax them, they're leaving the countries that tax them, period. 
and this this there's this new company called Prospera Incorporated that is working on building these new tech utopian libertarian towns in Honduras. Yeah, I mean, it's funny because, like, I remember people used to say, I don't want Austin to be, like, a playground for the rich. And it's like, dude, every city is a playground for the rich. And then you hear this, and it's like, oh, oh, no, this is a playground for the rich. These people are really doing it. These people are the premium gas of filling up their tank over there. They know exactly what they're doing. You need some rich around. Yeah. Hey, I want them around. I mean. I want to entertain them. I want to be a court jester. <laughs> yeah, as a I comedian. would love to sit at the king's feet and just laugh at the peasants with him while I eat his little breadcrumbs and take sips of the wine he spills. Do I like to do comedy in a club that pays me, has air conditioning, a full green room, charges the customers enough money so that they're invested in the show? Um, or do I want to always exclusively do comedy in the basement of a West Campus co-op for people who, you know, uh, didn't pay and aren't caring about the show? The co-op show is fun. The apartment show is fun. But sometimes performing for people with money is nice. Yeah, I would love that. I would love for people to throw tips on stage as I leave or even little doubloons or something. You know? <laughs> I don't want to have to fly to Honduras to do comedy is what I'm saying. Uh, I wouldn't mind. I, if you telling me, hey, all the rich people are in Honduras living in this little city. You have to go out there and you have to make jokes for them. But while you're there, you get to le- use their slaves. I bet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely, I would. And you're like, do they need... Okay, so they need a comedian. Do they need a plumber? Do they need an overseer? (laughs) (laughs) An an overseer? Now you have my attention. (laughs) I believe they call me a house something. I'm not sure what it is. First you had my attention. (laughs) Now you have my curiosity. (laughs) Now I would get some sort of hat to wear in the field. (laughs) Man, what I get, what I what I want is I don't want scarecrows. I want some taxidermy Puerto Ricans that we prop up in the field. Was it <laughs> some va- some scare vatos? <laughs> Didn't we have a city in the U.S. that they wanted to make like a libertarian stronghold, and it got overrun by bears? Am I remembering this incorrectly? Oh, I no. feel, and this might have just been like a funny internet story I read. Yes, I could just be riffing. Yes, but I feel like there was a big libertarian push in a small town to cut all uh, social services. I believe it was Idaho, and then because it was New Hampshire, New yes. Hampshire, yes. So this is a real thing. This isn't something I imagined. No, and it was in the glory days, 2020, when political consciousness was on like the brink. Everyone was, we were, all, we were all on the precipice to realizing we were all on the same team. We were so close. That was such oh a cool time because you'd go to Sam's Club or Costco and buy a bunch of eggs. And then people, your roommate would go, oh, you're a hoarder. <laughs> I remember that the big thing for a while was tattling on preppers. When people were like, yeah, I know this guy has like a, like a house full of toilet paper. We'd tell the feds, and the feds would come take their toilet paper and stuff. That was why I love toilet that paper. Type. Was like that. It's like they, yo, they got band aids. I'm yeah. like, what the? Fu- what do I care? Hilarious, hilarious. Yeah, man. But yeah, 2020 was the time where it's like random liberals suddenly were like, you know, there's no ethical consumerism under capitalism. It's like, where'd you learn that? Where where are you getting these ideas from? Like woman that just worked at the grocery store until last week and now you're at the protest with me? Who is this? Wait, where are you getting this idea? Someone with an Amazon Prime membership. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it because also at the same time, a bunch of companies were making commercials in 2020 that were like, we're all in this together. Johnson and Johnson wants you to know that we're fucking family and we're going to get through this. And it's like, yeah, because you guys just seem like you're rich people and we all seem like we're caught in a little apartment <laughs> poor and scared <laughs> oh man johnson and johnson was like don't worry oh do you remember when the celebrity sang imagine that was oh. horrible gal gadot Yo, amazing beautiful dude it was gal gadot and like um will ferrell was will there? ferrell and they all just sang imagine during early cor- covid like early quarantine we're like hey dude let's sing that song by john lennon people are gonna love this shit i had a roommate who's like we have to start stocking up on toilet paper and buying in bulk we should buy a year's worth of toilet paper nice and i'm like we live in a fucking one bedroom apartment in manhattan i don't know where we're gonna put a (laughs) year's worth of toilet paper i buy costco toilet paper i always have i always have three months four months of toilet paper in my house to be honest texas that makes sense you you, you got a house yeah yeah we're talking 400 square feet you know and to be clear, I don't own a house. If I owned a house, I wouldn't be doing comedy. He rents a house. I wouldn't be friends with either of these people. If I owned a house in Austin, I would live somewhere beautiful because I could rent it out for tons of money. Do you I don't think own if he house. owned a house, he'd be collecting desert storm cards? <laughs> you think this is homeowner stuff? No, baby. This is renter mindset. This is why I can't build wealth. 
The second I get any amount of disposable income, it goes straight to get my secret Saddam card. Every time he's on the phone, he goes, my hands are on this keyboard. My hands look like this so that my hands can look like, like this. this. <laughs> <laughs> I did get caught reading at work the other day. <laughs> I was on the phones at work. And my boss was like, what are you doing? And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, I can tell you're not paying attention. I was like, I did just get a new book. It's called Halliburton's Army. <laughs> I was like, I'm like eight pages in, man. I can't put it down. Oh, man. Last night, um, the late show here at the Creek in the Cave, this guy, um, I like run up to the bar to just like because they didn't have any red bull in the green room to grab a red bull and this guy was getting a drink at the bar and he like with bumps elbow and he goes oh my bad i go no worries man and i turn and he has a pole a golf polo that says academy a-c-a-d-a-m-i which is the rebranding of blackwater yeah <laughs> and i just i just I, he saw me register the shirt and i i just went <laughs> and i was like all right I'm going to go perform for an extrajudicial mercenary. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. Man, that's awesome. I wouldn't have been able to stop asking questions. Yeah, it wasn't my show. I was opening a, rec a special taping, and so I couldn't mm -hmm. do crowd work. I went, I one time when I was working at Seventh Flag, the coffee shop I worked at when I robbed those people, I was telling you about <laughs> earlier, this guy came in with his wife, and I was like, what do you guys do? And they're like, we both work for Halliburton. And I was like, oh, what do you guys do for, I asked them like a billion questions until they left. And my coworkers were like, that was weird. And I was like, no. Not really. They work for Halliburton. Nah, yeah. You don't get to meet those people often. I would ask a billion questions. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> and, and, this is, and this is a man who does not own a house. I thought about this just now. Because oh. this is the distractions of someone who's like, I don't have a down payment. <laughs> this <laughs> like is bread and circus. <laughs> this is my bread and circus. Is Cold War propaganda is the most important thing in the world to me. I love it. Oh my God, I love it. I love Cold War propaganda. I, I'm The next thing I'm buying off the same website is a bunch of Yugoslavian-issued military gear. Motherfucker. Yeah, and I'm like, you, I, any country that doesn't exist anymore, I'm like, I want I want your money. I want your posters. <laughs> I got a poster of Tito that's coming in the mail that I bought from Bosnia, former Yugoslavia. I love that. I love Cold War propaganda. Both sides, both sides, both sides. All three sides, technically. <laughs> How do you feel about this Cold War right now? Oh, we're winning, right? I feel like the U.S. interests are about to completely just dominate the world. The I think one... we're going to see the saddest version of World War Three, where it's just a bunch of proxy wars being completely crushed by our power. The only thing I don't think we have wrapped up tight is the Bay of Bengal. But we can get there. You know what? I think, so do you guys believe in the rods of God? I don't know. So it's a it's one of those it's one of those weapons that we don't admit that we have. I, I personally see. believe that we have it. Yeah. It's this uh, giant satellite that's in space or something similar to a satellite that has these massive pieces of metal that are the same as like telephone poles that just get dropped from space. And so it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, in like four minutes, you can have like, you know, a piece of metal drop and leave like a nuclear style blast because it's, you know, terminal velocity of a giant piece of metal just falling onto the earth. It'll pick up speed and fire falling down. Yeah. And it's like the most devastating weapon outside of like chemicals or nuclear that's really hard to like fight because it's not like rocket propelled or anything that you can like trace down or really battle against. But it's a weapon that I think because we most likely have, if anyone tries to do anything we ever dislike, we can just drop one of those. Wow. I think the U.S. will, like, completely, like, just destroy the world into rubbles and then rule it. I think we want to rule, like, a broken, burning, done, destroyed world. We're going to have to have you play with the cards a little bit less. <laughs> <laughs> I like that Iceland is one of the cards, too. Yeah. yeah just, I don't, just fun what's, facts. Yeah, what's the political interest of, I, of, of, of Iceland? Of Desert Storm. Oh, they actually let us keep a couple of CIA black sites there. That's probably what it was. Oh, Probably. Probably. We kept a lot of unmanned uh, air vessels. Where'd, where'd Iceland go? It's right here. Oh, okay, nice. Oh, what a boring flag. Right? Kind of a rip off of Finland. Yeah. In Sweden. Oh. Oh. They've been a government since ni 930. 1930? Mm -hmm. No, 930. 930. What the? Yeah. Is the oldest surviving government of this type in the world dating from about 930? God damn. Well, oh. Well, shout out to Iceland. Shout out to Iceland. Do you think that the we're going to have New Hampshire bear crisis in Honduras tech billionaire world? Sorry, sorry, one more time. So our libertarian company that wants to create these libertarian strongholds, literally playgrounds for the rich all over the world, what do you think their bear toppling event will be? Because like the libertarians in New Hampshire, 
they cut out social services, right. they so, got buried. So yeah, basically what happened in this New Hampshire town was like a city council and mayor were elected. And New Hampshire is a very libertarian state already, but they decided, let's crank it up a notch. Let's crank it up a notch to where we do not even have like public trash pickup. <laughs> yeah. And the trash, it's all cool. private. And the trash was not getting picked up and that attracted bears, I believe, into the town. In Texas, we'd be burning that trash. Burn Just to be the trash. Clear, we would not have a bear problem because we burned in that trash. Waste Texas. the bear. Mm-hmm. Dude, <clears throat> there was a bear cave behind my house growing up. Do you what? Know what? Like yeah. a gay bar? No, like a fucking bear, like real bears. In New Jersey? Yeah, there's tons of bears. I learned bear safety before I learned stop, drop, and roll. What the? Wait, is New Jersey not what I think it is? It's not what you think it is. It's like a small California in the Wait, sense it's not of like, a it bunch has, of... <laughs> it yeah, has I feel like a bunch of scary Italians living in one big neighborhood. No, dude, there's like, there's ski mountains, there's beaches, there's farms. It's got everything. But I had a bear cave behind <laughs> my house. And wow. uh, they fucking love Jenny Craig. They love it. The lasagna specifically. Me too. Really? All my garbage cans are bare safe. I like, the, women. I like safe. the Jenny Craig's fans. Are you kidding me? Girl, <laughs> if I see you at a Lane Bryant or in line to get some Jenny Craig, <laughs> I am drooling. You got my ass floating up like a hobo that smells an apple pie in a window seal. If I see you walking out of Lane Bryant with a Jenny Craig meal. <laughs> I see this man sometimes posted outside of Pinkberry. Just, <laughs> <laughs> just Hello, Miss, it Hey, Miss Milk of Magnesia, why don't you come up and say something <laughs> to me? Hey, yo, Miss Milk of Magnesia. <laughs> <laughs> me talking to women. Yeah, but the fucking bears, dude. They um. You had a bear cave behind your house mm -hmm. in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Do you ever see a bear? All the time, constantly, like almost daily. Oh, because New Jersey, you can hunt. You can yeah, hunt you can hunt for sure. Yeah. Yeah. In New York, you have to be outside of the city to hunt. Well, yeah. Okay. I sound like a guy that just moved to America. Huh? <laughs> Also, it's crazy hearing him about New Jersey. I go like, man, I feel like a guy that just like thinks that everywhere is California and America. You know what I mean? Where it's like when I hear about New Jersey and I'm like, wait, it's not just like a neighborhood for New York. It has like a whole yeah. like life to it. That's wild. I mean, if you really break it down, you're in the South Jersey, you're a suburb of Philly and North Jersey, you're a suburb of New York. But they got it all. Well, I don't know enough about geography to realize that New Jersey's right next to Philly. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. So... Right outside my house. Oh my god. That's a gross bear. You can see his hard cock. Yeah. It's weird that I called the bear his penis his cock. <laughs> you know? Um... <laughs> I called it the bear dick or bear penis, but I said cock. It's because it's a big fat cock. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a healthy bear cock. You Juicy little, bear you, cock. You're a little honey pot. Yeah, he's a girthy bear cock getting me all juiced up. Yeah, he's walking around like poo. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Calling Timothy Robbins or whatever it is. His hand stuck all up in my honey jar, walking around with only a t-shirt on, <laughs> Winnie the Poohing around my house. What do you think? What are you, why, are you, why, are you, why are you being a seductive Kevin Spacey right now? <laughs> the funniest thing I've I ever say, heard someone back say. Nah, back now in New Jersey, nah. nah <laughs> we, would, we, we used to smother honey down our asshole now. And uh, <laughs> I always said passing a bill through the legislature was a lot like getting a bear to fuck you. You gotta lay down and let the honey do its work. <laughs> <laughs> One of the funniest things I've ever heard someone say, this guy is not a comedian. He had sex with this girl that we all knew he wanted to have sex with. Sure. And Good we were like, him. he left and he's going over to my friend's house. He's back in Sacramento. And he goes, man, she's still at my house right now. I'm so mad. And he goes, get this. Oh, this is so funny. He goes, I woke up. She's in my kitchen wearing one of my t-shirts, eating my food. I said, damn, bitch, you straight up Winnie the Poohin, hand up in my honey jar trying to ruin my weekend morning. Hilarious. <laughs> that is one of the funniest things I've ever heard. She's wearing his t-shirt. Oh, you walking around Winnie the Poohin, eating my food, hand up in my honey jar trying to ruin my week. I was like, that's one of the funniest things I've ever heard in my life. That is funny. But also what's funnier is you said this is a woman he wanted <laughs> oh, yeah. to hook up with. Thirsting after for months. Yeah. And then once he got it, he was like, no. Yeah. Ugh, uh, ain't that life. <laughs> <laughs> ain't that life. Ugh. Usually it's uh, it's sex with someone who you're like, it's going to be fine. And yeah. then that's the one where you're like, I'm obsessed with them. I think about them all the time. I'm less productive in comedy. I'm not going to the gym. I'm not eating as much. You think about something and it becomes this idea in your head that isn't 
you know, actually reality. It just becomes this paradise, and suddenly you have all cards that don't even have Osama bin Laden in it, and you're just obsessed with this. And it just becomes your whole identity. And you're dialing. And you, <laughs> you, you just keep dialing. You keep, and you keep dialing. You keep what do you think I'm on the phones for, buddy? I want my Osama card. You, you, you just keep calling these lawyers, and you're Kevin Spacey. You, you know? You, you. <laughs> Man, I like calling lawyers because they cuss on the phones. Yeah. Because they're so mad. They're just so mad. Yeah. Oh, man. What do you think the Libertarians' bear is going to be? Because, like, these guys, these New Hampshire fellas, they just left their trash out eaten by bears. Obviously, the Libertarian tech sickos, they're going to have some, you know, bear eating their trash event. What do you think it's going to be? What do you think this Honduro perverts are going to have? What do you think they're The Libertarians bear? that are trying to build utopias in Central America, the bear that comes for them is going to be climate change. You think so? I think so. I think that you're so close to the equator... It's going to get so un untenably hot that you're going to go, well, time to build a tech utopia in Minnesota mm -hmm. because it's too hot year round to be here. It's I think, you know how the Mormons go out to Mexico, turn of the century? Mission trips, yeah. Or right. Whatever, yeah. No, like the 1800s, they oh, go out they there. Oh, they did. They did go out there just to live. Just to live, to have wives out there pretty much because they wanted to like, you know, live lawless. They wanted to do the same things as libertarians do. What happened to the Mormons is they got caught up in cartel battles. Yeah. And they became not only intertwined with international politics that pertain to the cartels, but I mean, they're, you know, intertwined with businesses that the Bushes and the Romneys and other political dynasties in the U.S. are also intertwined with. I think when we see these libertarians go out to Honduras and try to create their fun little city and say, hey, we're going to divorce ourselves from politics. OK, then you had that mediator mediator between you and the black market that actually runs this world. Now you're just going to get directly involved with the black market, just like the Mormons and Mexico did. That's what I think. I think the bears that are going to come for them is the actual real world of power, which is drugs and human trafficking. Mm. I think that they're going to have to become subsidiaries of the cartel. Yeah, you look at what the local economy is happening in Central America, mm -hmm. and you're like, well, I might as well partake. I wet my beak. <laughs> yeah. you know? I mean, hey, boys, we're, we are trying to sell cloud software plans that are subscription based uh to business to business you know whatever mm -hmm. uh our, our really what i like to do is i sell payroll service to like mid-sized uh real estate firms uh -huh. but i also gotta move weight <laughs> 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 because right now we have uh, uh we've already cornered the local yucatan plantain on lock <laughs> Diego's got that up and down on the trucks now what we need to get in the sky is that bam bam fire <laughs> do you know what I'd like to see what's that now I'd like to see propaganda playing cards for cartels and the international and domestic <sighs> players in the cartel world oh my god I got an El Chapito <laughs> oh my god <laughs> oh dude I got a DEA agent <laughs> interesting you somehow connected to the CIA card they're connected somehow I don't know <laughs> I have an so Admiral Haynes card I, I didn't think she would be <laughs> What? How did that get in? Hey, get out of there. You st Man, I got really drunk about a year ago, and I bought this sweater offline that has Gary Webb's photo on it. And it says the the highest uh, the highest award you can get in journalism is the Gary Webb Award because he was killed with you know two bullets to the back of the head, Ugh. and that's the cringiest sweater ever. I would never actually wear that. I would yeah. never wear a Gary Webb sweater so sad. that says that's you so know, fucking sad. Yeah. So and I would never wear that, but I got it. I was so drunk that I bought that, and I was like, man, my wife needs to take my credit card away. From me. <laughs> Otherwise, it's all stuff like that and this. Like I'm so easy to market to. Dude. I mean, it was better than the Michael Hastings T-shirt. <laughs> What's the Michael Hastings? Michael Hastings. Oh wait, no. Yeah, Michael Hastings. I'm like, can you look it up if it's Christopher Hastings or Michael Hastings? I'm fucking bulbing out right now. These early podcasts are killing me. Uh, yeah, Michael Hastings. Yeah, he was the guy who was basically reporting on how Obama was like really handling the war on terror, and was like, okay, great. We're now over a decade into this war. And we're moving heroin and not really improving the democracy. And we're also just funneling, laundering money, using this war to the military industrial complex. And we're also like just losing the war at home with PTSD and morale and taxation mm -hmm. and in a recession. We're actually at this point, America was starting to get out of the recession. And it was like the beginning of the second term of Obama. And, you know, we're Guantanamo Bay is still open. Things they cut are, his brakes, didn't they? Am I reading that right? No. Yeah, they uh. Big sparks and flames of fire, fish tail, and crashing into a palm tree. The idea is that the CIA remote control car him into a tree. Uh, yeah. It's funny that like if you read history 
how we do that. But if I say, oh, I wonder if there was any type of like nefarious actions in this fool's death, that's just like a crazy person thought. And I, I think you and I are past that. I don't think you're crazy for thinking the CIA did something. I don't think you think I'm crazy because I think, you know, probably the CIA did something. But like, would you tell a girl that? Like a girl that doesn't know you too well? Yeah, all the time. Really? That's how I vet them. Yeah. I'm serious. <laughs> oh my God. Like, it, you know, like I have a joke in my act about how like I don't drink. And I like I, I like to go on a date with women who cult have like a cocktail or two uh -huh. on the first date because it just makes me easier. Yeah. Because, you know, like I can be like, look, you can have a drink, which like makes them feel comfortable to talk because if I'm going to talk, I'm going to bring up, bring up JFK. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna, <laughs> without a doubt. I'm going to bring up Michael Hastings. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to bring up Jamal Khashoggi. <laughs> um, like I'll like I'll, I'll, I'll always try to intro it with like, oh, I, I really like investigative journalism <laughs> i have favorite journalists oh you like true fact. crime <laughs> yeah oh you like true crime i love investigative journalism <laughs> journalism's so good they kill you for it oh who's they <laughs> if i have to answer that you're not gonna like this next sentence bye <laughs> i had a really great time <laughs> i had a great i time. had a great time at peter pan putt putt but <laughs> but i am absolutely shit faced on the red four locos and my vomit looks like blood one time uh, i went on a date with peter pan putt putt i met her on OK Cupid, and I was Cute. 20 years old. Cute. And uh, she's super hot. And mm -hmm. we right. went on this date. I fucked her. And <laughs> <laughs> I bet you did, buddy. We went we went on this date, and afterwards she was like, Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm only a couple miles from my apartment. I'm gonna walk home. And then she said, Do you wanna walk home? But I thought she said, Do you wanna walk me home? And I said, Sure. And so we walk in for like five or ten minutes, and then she looks at me and she goes, You know, you don't have to walk me home. And I thought she was saying, like, even though you, and I was like, oh no, it's fine, I don't mind. And then a couple minutes she goes, hey, I'd really feel more comfortable walking by myself. And I was like, oh, did I mishear you? I thought you said you wanted me to walk you home. And she looked at me like, you're so full of shit. And she was like, no, I didn't say that. Oh. And so it just looked like I went to Peter Pan Golf, had a bad date, and was like, no, I'm following you home, bitch. <laughs> bitch, I am following you to your house. And I just remember the first time she said like, you know, you don't have to walk me home. I was like, oh no, it's fine. I don't mind at all. You know, It's not even dark yet. I'll walk you home. And because I, 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 either I misheard her or she changed her mind. Either way, I looked like I was gonna fucking kill she her. She doesn't fucking understand. I fucking sprung for the glow in the dark putt putt goal. <laughs> I paid for our putt putt. You have to do something to me. Do something to me to make me feel good. I want you to just scream at it. <laughs> <laughs> Not say something mean, but scream. I want to pull my pants down and I just want you to go. <laughs> Man, this morning I sent Sam I a feel video. The heat of the scream. I sent Sam a video trying to do a money spread with these. Hey, don't have a call me broke, baby. Spreading them out like that, and I, that's when I realized, man. I need 10 to 15 more packs of these because <laughs> I do look broke. I only have two packs of these. This That's band will make a dance. <laughs> well, <laughs> Going up to the club trying to toss this on a hoe. <laughs> <laughs> I make it rain on you. It's like the a only bath is still in power. <laughs> <laughs> so really, if you guys want to, we'll, we'll post the link to the Jacobin article and like whenever we post the episode so you guys can fully look into it. The main idea is that like, Tech utopians from Western Europe and the United States and Canada are fleeing to Central America and building these private enclave towns that are going to be working in tandem with the Honduras government on a state, local, and federal level. But in those enclave towns, they're going to be having their own police, their own doctors, their own fire departments, their own everything. It is a private everything. I think it's fun that they finally get to prove that the economic and political realms can be completely separated. It's going to be so great when they prove that and they go, oh, hey, no, it's good. We actually built our own police force so that way they can't be corrupt with money. And that's and so these are the options of governance and living in cities in 10 years. You have the option to self-segregate and privatize everything and have no say except your dollar and how you live away from everyone who is not in your tax bracket or company. The other option is to become subservient, complicit, and governed by the local governments in a maximalist level. This is a was a, a quick Wikipedia. You can look it up. It's a pro, it's called Sidewalk Toronto. It was a project that this uh, uh, the city of Toronto in Canada tried to run with Alphabet, which is the parent company of Google, where basically they were trying to create smart cities 
where they just ran analytic software on the entire city of Toronto. They were tracking where and how often and really like how people moved. Yeah, there's an AI that will measure, measure the shape of my skull to tell you how likely it is for me to do a crime. Yeah, it's essentially they were like really taking in photographing like you're, it, they made they were trying to make like when you go to the airport, there's cameras everywhere. They're tracking how many people go through the airport, who's going through the airport, where they're going. JT, Auntie Ann Pretzel again, you know, like mm -hmm. they're checking everything. I thought they'd get a laugh pissing my ass. Uh, no, I actually have never had Auntie Auntie's. Ooh, Auntie ooh, Auntie's Pretzels. Annie Ann's, Annie 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 Annie's Pretzels. Jersey. I almost got arrested at LAX last week, though. So. Well, I'm going to Antifa them one day. <laughs> but they were just turning the entire city of Toronto into an airport where they were tracking everything. And then they were selling that data to Google. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't that sound like a lie a crazy guy would make up on a bus? <laughs> they eventually had to end the program. But that's what's going to happen. They're going to create these smart cities as cities on a hill. Where you have only access, you'll be you'll be chipped, and you'll only have access to the neighborhoods that you work in or you live in. Mm -hmm. Oh, you work downtown and you live in Hyde Park? You don't, Jimmy Clifford, you don't get to go to Zilker Park. Gattaca level eyeball scans to let you down there. That's correct. Well, I'm sorry I killed the mood. Um, it's bad news. Bad news. Hey, we're not talking about good news. We hope we had laughter and love along the way God. and lived. My name is Sam Castillo. I'm JT Kelly. Always with us is... What's up, Jimmy Clifford? What's up, Jimmy? We will see you guys soon. Thank you so much. God I'm bless.